this Coliseum right here in Richmond, Virginia will be filled with thousands of cheering onlookers who have come to see the 1988 Bassmasters Classic Champion crowned. You'll be watching with all of them as one of the 42 world-class bass anglers competing here is named best of the best, the world champion of professional bass angling. Since that first world championship 18 long years ago, professional bass angling has changed the face of sport fishing, growing into an internationally recognized sport with wide media coverage. It's a true profession that demands different kinds of skills than other world-class professional sports. In the next 90 minutes, you're going to be right here with the pros and see all of it. The preparation, the flurry of activity, the disappointments, the thrill of victory for one angler, because there is only one world champion of professional bass angling, the Bassmasters Classic winner. I'm Ray Scott. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters will be right back from Richmond, Virginia. The 1988 Bassmasters Classic, the world championship of professional bass angling. The culmination of a year of competition for these anglers to earn the right to be in this tournament. The most prestigious bass fishing event in the world. A new chapter in American sports history will be written here this week. Just as history was written in this same area nearly 400 years ago. That's when a group of heroic voyagers crossed the Atlantic in three small ships and landed here in 1607 on the banks of the James River, establishing the first permanent English settlement in America. Virginia is called the birthplace of the nation because it was on the banks of the James River where the colonists elected the first legislature in America. And it was here in Williamsburg that many of the first strong protests were lodged against the English Parliament by such famous leaders as Thomas Jefferson and Patrick Henry, the patriot who in this church in 1775 proclaimed, I know not what course others may take, but as for me, give me liberty or give me death. The Revolutionary War began in 1775 and six years later ended in Virginia. And it was here in Virginia nearly a century later where the first major battle of the Civil War was staged. And also in Virginia where that war ended in 1865. Now, 123 years later, within sight of battles past, men and their magnificent fishing machines do battle not with others, but rather with the bass of Virginia in the James River and its tributaries. From historic Richmond downriver some 85 miles to near Hampton and Newport News, the best bass anglers in the world are competing for three days for the title of world champion and the $50,000 first prize. 36 of these Bassmasters earned invitations to this test of the best by competing head-to-head -head in six oh BASS God. Invitational oh tournaments held thing. throughout the year. Five other anglers earned their berth by qualifying through the BASS Federation program. The 42nd angler is the defending champion, George Cochran, of North Little Rock, Arkansas. And now, the 1988 Bassmasters Classic Field. Angler of the Year, number one seed and three-time Classic Champion, Rick Klon of Texas. The 1988 Angler of the Year runner-up, Guido Hibden of Missouri. Ken Cook of Oklahoma, winner of the 1987 New York Invitational. 1988 Texas Invitational Champion, Shaw Grigsby of Florida. First-time Bassmasters Classic contender, Bill Bartlett of Tennessee. 1975 Classic Champion Jack Haynes of Louisiana. Seven-time Classic Qualifier Wu Daves of Virginia. All-time BASS Money Winner Larry Nixon of Texas. 1982 Classic Champion Paul Elias of Mississippi. 1979 Classic Champion Hank Parker of North Carolina. Veteran Classic Angler Gary Klein of Texas. Two-time classic contender John Dean of Louisiana. 1986 Super Invitational Champion Zell Rowland of Texas. 1987 BASS Angler of the Year Denny Brower of Missouri. 
1987 Georgia Invitational Champion, Tom Mann Jr. of Georgia. 1981 Classic Champion, Stanley Mitchell of Georgia. Three-time Classic Contender, Rob Kilby of Arkansas. Nine-time Classic Contestant, Jerry Ryan of North Carolina. 1976 and 1986 Angler of the Year, Jimmy Houston of Oklahoma. Two-time Classic Qualifier, Steve Daniel of Florida. Five-time Classic Qualifier, John Hall of Texas. Dion Hibden, youngest person to ever fish a Classic, and son of Guido Hibden. Five-time Classic Contender, Cliff Kraft from Georgia. 1987 Megabucks Champion, Lonnie Stanley of Texas. O.T. Fears from Oklahoma, fishing his third Classic. Veteran Western angler Greg Hines of Arizona, making his first classic appearance. 1974 classic champion Tommy Martin of Texas. Three-time classic contender Mickey Bruce of Georgia. 1986 Megabucks winner Roger Farmer of Georgia. 1984 classic runner-up Dr. Greg South of Virginia. Two-time classic challenger Mark Davis of Arkansas. 1980 Classic Champ, Bo Dowden of Louisiana. Classic Rookie, George Lytle Jr. of Illinois. Another Classic Rookie, Doug Youngblood of Georgia. Basil Bacon of Missouri, a veteran angler who will be fishing his 100th BASS event. Rich Tauber of California, fishing his second Classic. And the BASS Federation qualifiers, Jack Bell of Pennsylvania, representing the Eastern Division. Lewis Q of Iowa, representing the Northern Division. Hoot Gibson of Mississippi, representing the Central Division. Dan Jordan from Oregon, representing the Western Division. Danny Joe Humphrey of North Carolina, representing the Southern Division. And seven-time classic qualifier and defending champion, George Cochran of North Little Rock, Arkansas. The 42 contenders for the Classic Crown arrived Sunday here in Richmond, checking in and receiving their official tournament equipment for this week's competition. Following press day with photos and interviews from the more than 100 members of the international press attending this event, they began two days of practice prior to the start of official competition. For these Bassmasters, it's the week of the year, and for one angler, possibly the biggest of his life. The Bassmasters will be right back from Richmond, Virginia. While every angler competing here is more than qualified to win this 18th annual Bassmasters Classic World Championship, there are two fishermen here with a home river advantage. Dr. Greg South of Richmond and Wu Daves of Chester, Virginia. Greg South acknowledged earlier that he spent many hours preparing for this tournament prior to the pre-practice cutoff five weeks ago. But Wu Daves has more experience fishing the James River than any contestant here. He's won numerous tournaments on these waters and is considered a front runner. Today, these two anglers are fishing with Gerald L. Belisles, Virginia's 65th governor. Go. Another chicken hominy river fish. Uh -huh. about the average size fish that we catch down here on this river. How about that one? Nice. Did you get that fish. one, Garvey? Got it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Jerry Belisles, Governor of Virginia. I'd like to welcome all of you to the Commonwealth of Virginia, the site of the 18th annual Bassmasters Classic. I think it's appropriate that the Classic is being held in Virginia this year because this is not only where America began, but this is where all the fish are. And we think that our guests and visitors will enjoy participating in this tournament, uh, which will display for all of our guests some of the best fishing streams and rivers in all of America. It's a great state with a great quality of life, and we hope that all of our visitors enjoy their stay in Virginia. Well, what's it going to take to win this tournament in terms of weight? Uh, I'm going to say around 38 pounds. Somebody could come in and make me look pretty bad, but trying to put it together for three days in a row, we've got a short fishing day, a lot of pressure. There's going to be a lot of boats on the river watching and riding around. 
So I think a man that can average 12 to 13 pounds a day at the end will be looking pretty strong. There's always a possibility somebody catch an eight or nine pound fish and I could throw them up into the 45 pound range, but that would be a stroke of luck if it happened. Greg, I know you and Wu are very good friends, but what's going to happen to that friendship when you all are competing against each other in this tournament? <laughs> well, it's, it's true. Um, we fished an awful lot together as teams, as, as teammates, and, and we are best friends. And, and yet, in this particular tournament, we, we kind of have to try to put that out of our mind and, and, and really to fish as individuals. And, and yet, I, uh, I think I can speak for both of us and say that, that if I don't win, then I, you know, I, I want him to win. And in some aspects, in a way, it's very difficult for me because I have, a, I have another career. I have another way of making a living, and, and uh, I know how much it means. And in some ways, I, I find myself at times almost kind of pulling a little bit for Wu, you know, rather than for myself, and that makes it a little bit difficult. And, uh, you know, I even told him, I said, you know, Wu, if, if you win the tournament, uh, you know, then I'd be happy to come in second. But if I won the tournament, then I really don't want him to come in second. I'd rather he'd be like third or fourth because I could always look at him and say, you know, see, I didn't, you know, keep you from winning the classic. You know, somebody else would have beat you, and I didn't really do that. But, you know, I, I think there are probably not a whole lot of people in the general public that realize the importance of winning the Bassmasters Classic. That is basically a career, uh, you know, to win that tournament. And, uh, you know, that, that uh, could establish, I mean, so many things for Wu. I mean, it would, do it, it would do it for me, but I have another way. You know, fishing is not my primary way of, of livelihood, and it is, it is for him. What does winning the world championship mean? One person who can readily answer that is 1987 Bassmasters Classic champion George Cochran. I've had the best time of my life this last year, and people recognize you no matter if you're in Minnesota or Florida. They'll give a double take and say, hey, there's the world's champion. I saw him on TV at Louisville. And you just don't realize the impact it has now that the tournaments are, you know, you you're have the, the show and it's televised live on, you know, on uh, that Sunday or Saturday whenever it was shown. And uh, people just recognized me right off where before, you know, they knew me as a good fisherman, but winning the world championship it's made, it, uh, made me able to make a living in the fishing industry. Uh, it's changed my life. It's changed my wife's life. Where she used to work at, let's say, at Dillard's up here, not far from where we live. She had to quit her job to keep me lined out as like my agent. And uh, so it's really changed our whole lifestyle, except uh, to the best. I've really, you know, it's just like the money is not as important to me it's, it's being able to do what I like to do and make a living at it, and that's what it's all about. Stay tuned as competition gets underway and one angler makes his move. The Bassmasters will be right back from the James River near Richmond, Virginia. Don't go away. First day of the 1988 Bassmasters Classic. Although these anglers have practiced for the past two days, many left their best spots untouched, areas they found during pre-practice five weeks ago. But sometimes too many good areas can be a problem, like local favorite Dr. Greg South explains. Well, it's like now, uh, uh, you know, I've got so many places scattered out, and they're all good spots, but there's no way that you can fish them all in, in one day or even fish them all in three days. And uh, with the short hours that we have and, and the way the tides are, there's no way I can, can fish everything that I know. And I think sometimes that can be a disadvantage to have too many spots when you can't cover them. And uh, in your mind, you have to make a decision on which ones are the ones that you really think are going to pay off and, and hope that you make the right decision. Because there's no doubt in my mind that I know enough spots that I think the tournament might could be won there. Uh, but, I, you know, I, I've got to make the right decisions and go to the correct spots for the ones that I've got. Although it's the angler with the heaviest catch of bass at the end of three days who will win this tournament, the Bassmasters who have experience fishing tidal water have an advantage. Anglers like hometown favorite Wu Daves, who understands this river and her moods, and how tides affect bass fishing on the James. How you gonna get him out? You did get him out of there, didn't you? How heavy a line you using there? Twelve. Jeez. 
Looks like it ought to be about 30 back in there. That's a nice little fish, isn't it? Yep, I'd take five of them to start off every day. Chuck, this fish came out of 12 inches of water, which, again, that's the first break. As you can see how the sand comes out and drops by that log. Uh -huh. Then if you come out two or three more feet, there's going to be another break. And on one of those two breaks is generally where the fish hold. And that's a pretty healthy fish, probably a pound and a quarter, maybe a pound, seven ounces. Is that average up in here? That's about an average size fish. Well, I'm going to ask you to explain this tide thing to me, but even with all the tidal effect that there is in the river, how important is structure like this duck blind and these pads? Well, in tide water river, most of your fish are going to be in five foot water to one foot of water. And that's, that's where all your structure is. You got trees hanging over. This, a duck blind like this is real good. Lily pads. For some reason, though, the fish just don't like to go deep in this tide river. I don't know if it's because of the current they'd have to fight heavy or anything, but they're going to get back up in these flats, and they need something to break the current. So a duck blind like this with all these posts and everything is a real good current break. And if you look around, you'll see the current going through it and right. swirling through it, but if you look, there's little eddy pockets all in there, and that's where your fish will get. Once the tide drops out, when you've got a low tide, your current's not moving much, so they'll pull right out on the outside edges. And it doesn't affect them, but when that tide's rolling one way or the other, they need something to get behind. So what you're saying is that, that more important than just for a place for the fish to get under out of the shade, and, or in the shade and all that is breaking up of the, the tremendous break, current right. coming through, making it easier for them to live. Some kind of current break. They've got to fight that current all their life. And when they've got a little something, a cypress tree they can get behind, we'll show you, I'll show you one in a minute. We'll go up and fish it. Pads, that current coming through those pads, it breaks it up. There's about five ma major structures in here. You've got duck blinds, cypress trees, trees laying off, you know, fallen trees that have fallen in the water. You've got lily pads, and you've got grass. Boat docks is another. There's a million boat docks on this river and pilings and stuff. And any, all the, anything that'll break that current will hold a fish. And that's why if you see, you know, you always, you never see a, like you go to, a, say, a lake like Sam Rayburn or you fall or something, you see boats sitting all out in the middle of the lake fishing. You'll never see that here. If it's a bass boat, he's going to be right in next to the bank somewhere in five or six foot of water looking for that current break to fish. Chuck, we take a lot of these shallow running crankbaits like a Killer B-1, a Bomber Fire Tiger Model A, any little bit of crankbaits. I prefer the balsa wood type bait. A lot of people don't realize you look at these lily pads and stuff out here and you see a lot of leaves and a mass of congestion there. You'd never think about pulling a crankbait through it. But underneath the water, all you've got those little stems you see sticking up. And if you can get the crankbait over and reel it down a little bit, find you a hole, you'll come under all the leaves and stuff and you can work it all the way back to the boat. I'm going to try and show you here. Just in other words, I get it over behind them right here, and you can kind of guide it with your rod, too, and you can come right through every one of those little holes. And we catch a lot of fish up here. There's been a lot of tournaments won on these little crankbaits, and that's something a lot of people don't realize. I've never seen one of them go through it like that. that. They can do. Never have. But all those stems are going straight up, aren't right. they? They're not going out They're going the straight up. Like I say, just looking at it from up here, it just looks like a, a mat of mess, like, so to speak. The Bassmasters will be right back from Virginia, the birthplace of the nation. Don't go away. The anglers are catching bass. Many local fishermen feel the heaviest stringers will come this first day when the easy bass are located and caught. It's also a general feeling that the winner of this Bassmasters Classic Championship will need three daily five bass limits. And two or three fish in those creels will need to be in the three to four pound range. Classic Week is more than just fishing for the contestants and their wives. There are dinners, outings, and special functions like the Angler of the Year Banquet honoring Rick Klun, the year's number one ranked bass angler. This 42-year-old fisherman is making his 15th straight classic appearance. And this first morning, just moments before takeoff, Ray Scott talks with Rick about this classic. Rick, uh, this first day in uh, 
you know, this is this has been your year, angler of the year, and uh, you've got three classic wins behind you, and here we are looking down to throw the possibility of doing that one once in a lifetime, be winning angler of the year plus the classic. Uh, yeah, how, how do you feel about it? You, you're very confident. You appeared earlier. Well, I, I, you know, I feel very comfortable about the classic right now, and uh, uh, you know, the day's going to tell me a lot more about how comfortable I am. But, uh, obviously, you know, combining the angle of the year in the classic in, in, in one year is obviously very difficult. I mean, said eight, said eight, 18 years now, I've never done that. And, uh, so, uh, I, I, don't, I really haven't thought much about combining the two. I really just really thought about trying it again perform the highest level I can in the classic. And if I, if I can do that and get a couple of right bites, then that one can take care of itself. Then, then I'd probably, after it was over, I'd probably think about it and appreciate it more than, than I'm probably thinking about it now. I've all, in the classic, I've always been able to just really focus on executing absolutely at the highest level I can, and that's what I'm trying to do. You're right, Jerry says that you're more relaxed in this tournament than you've ever been, and I've noticed that you've, you've been uh, really loose. Well, I, again, I've get, gotten better at uh, balancing the uh, festivity side of the classic with the real intense side of the classic, and uh, uh, I, I know when I crank this engine, what I'm going to do, and the rest of the time I'm going to have to go to this engine. you got to crank it, engine. you got to go. Good luck to you. Wish you well. Thank you. All right. It's this first day that will raise the curtain on Classic 18. Here's okay, the opening Rick scene Klund. as Rick Clun weighs in. Rick, you got your limit. Only got four, right? Only got four. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, that's a problem with the practice. Uh, you know, like a lot of guys, you, I know, you've been shaking off a lot of fish uh, in practice, and you go back to where you get the most bites, and you hope they're mostly keepers. And uh, the day they were, they were mostly non-keepers, and. Uh, uh, I did lose one keeper. I had a shot at a limit. It wouldn't have been much more than what I got now. But right. Your weight today, by the way, four pounds and ten ounces. That's going to put you back in about fourth place right now, Rick. Well, this is only first flight, only the first day of the tournament, and I'm a little disappointed, but uh, th th there's enough big fish out there to catch back up. So uh, that's what I'm hoping to do the next two days. I would not trust you a minute. Good luck to you, Rick. Nice hand, folks. Rick Klein, proving he's human. And Wu Daves, the hometown favorite, goes to the live well. Mr. Cool, well, is your mother here? Yeah, she's sitting right there, my daughter. Stand up, Miss Davis. That is Miss Davis. Give her a nice hand, folks. Bless your heart, oh, your daughter. daughter. That's my daughter beside her, and my son down on the end. All right, your weight today. The lead, by the way, at the moment. You are the lead. 11 pounds and three ounces. Woo days. Dr. Greg South comes to the scales. This is, his, this is Greg South's son, Jason. He's been helping. Let's give him a nice hand. Jason, here comes your dad, son. Give him a hug, boy. You better be proud of your pop. All right, he's got your dad. he got four fish. What do you think about that? That's good. That's good. Okay, you call the weight. Would you do that for me, Jason? Now watch it there now. When it gets stopped, would you tell me what it says? Not yet. Um, 14 pounds. Don't. Six pounds, ten ounces. Six pounds, ten ounces, he says. Jason, you're the man. <laughs> Don't be in such a hurry, lad. Doc, you know, six pounds and ten ounces puts you about uh, three pounds and one ounce behind your good counterpart, Wu Davis, who's just across the creek. Well, I'm real, uh, I'm real happy for Wu. Uh, this is one of those days of just missed opportunities for me. Um, I made, uh, I don't know you can really say I made mistakes. It just wasn't meant to be. Um, I had the fish on and laid eyeballs on the, on the fish that would have put me up around between 14 and 15 pounds. I had one, one of the bigger fish I've ever had on this river that was, we saw six pounds of fish and 
you know, it, it was up on top in a way and just simply the hook pulled out and nothing much you can do about that. And I had another one about three pounds that got wrapped around a duck blind and broke me off. And, you know, I got my first four bites, caught them on four, got them in, had three more good bites after that, didn't get one of the fish. So I was fishing for six good bites. I got seven, uh, but I didn't get them in the boat. And you can't afford that sort of thing to happen in a tournament like this. And an angler who's always a threat, Guido Hibden, angler of the year, runner-up. Guido, if you would, uh, lift those fish up nice and slow where the folks on both sides of the arena can see. You have to hold them a little higher because that's a little one. One. Let's count them, folks. Let's get alive, folks. Come on. One. Two. I sound like woo. Three. Now that fish there is a good one. If he brings two more out like that, your old man's in trouble. That's a good fish. That's another two plus. Watch him, folks. Watch him, folks. I've had that feeling all week. Wu Dave still leads with 11 pounds, 3 ounces, followed by Gary Klein with 10 pounds and 4 ounces. And if you would, come straight to the scale. Guido Hibden. I've had that feeling about you all week. And your wife over there is about to have a heart attack. Why don't you look at her on the second row right there? <laughs> all right, here we go. Watch the scales for Guido Hibden. Now, remember, Wu Days has the leader, you know. I'm sure you've heard that all over the country. 11 pounds and 3 ounces. So we'll see what happens after your weigh in. 11 pounds, 4 ounces. You've taken the lead from Wu Days. Boy, oh boy. Let's give him a hand. That's a great job for an old man. I'm proud of you. The only person in the entire house that's not clapping is two people, Wu Daves and his mother. She's sitting there just completely mad. Miss Daves, he's, you still got a chance. Listen, Guido, I had this funny feeling. I don't know what it was. At breakfast this morning, we were watching you eating your eggs and... Uh, and biscuits and coffee, and I asked you, I said, what kind of day do you anticipate? You just looked at me, kind of twitched your eye. Well, we had a good time today. I, you know, I was very fortunate to get the bites I caught. I caught one fish, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm not real sure I understand to tie it at all. I'm just fishing real hard is all I'm doing. The hunt is on, but Classic 18 has only just begun. Stay tuned as the Bassmasters cameras take you with these anglers as they compete for the world championship. The Bassmasters will be right back from historic Richmond, Virginia. Day two starts early for these competitors, about 4 a.m. Breakfast, and then to the boatyard, and the trip to the launching area. The classic contestants use identically rigged Ranger bass boats. The trolling motors are 24-volt, 45-pound thrust motor guide Brood 765s, powered by AC Delco Voyager deep cycle batteries. Electronics include three Humminbird depth sounders. Powering these sleek rigs are Evinrude XP-150s or Johnson GT-150s. These official outboard motors of the Bassmasters Classic are hand-built, requiring a precise, detailed manufacturing process before they're turned on the first time.
sky is clear this second day as these 42 Bassmasters launch at the deep bottom boat ramp on the James River. Earlier today, Rick Clun commented that this classic sports the toughest field of anglers in the 18-year history of this championship. Nine former world champions are here. Anglers like Paul Elias, who won the 82 Classic on the Alabama River. This 37-year-old Bassmaster continues to face the area he located during practice in the old barge pit a short distance from the deep bottom launch ramp. The crankbait pattern he's using is what earned him the Bassmaster's Classic title six years ago. Although Texas angler Gary Klein has not yet won a Classic, this 30-year-old is considered one of the best touring pros in the country and is in third place this morning. Today's flipping boat docks on the Chickahominy River 50 miles from the launch site. Earlier this week, Rick Clun predicted this tournament would be close, that anyone in the top 10 could win it going into the last day. Guido Hibden keeps working his pattern. He's an angler who's never out of contention. His runner-up angler of the year performance substantiates that. It's a goal he worked hard for that escaped him this year. But one dream did become a reality. Having his son Dion also qualify for this classic championship. Dion, who just turned 21, is a rookie here and the youngest angler ever to qualify for the Bassmasters Classic. And through the year's competition, he and his dad worked together to find the bass. Good down there? No, not very much. I'll tell you what, I think we'll go over here by this bridge now and look at this little place that I looked at a little bit there yesterday and see what that drop looks like. There was a bunch of fish on it. And I think we'll pull in there and just one of us start on one side of it and one on the other side and see what we can. I'll throw a do nothing and a G2 and you throw something else, a crankbait or. Just a Texas rig worm, whatever. And we'll just try to cover as much water as we can and do it that way. Kind of work, work, spread out and get away from one another and just work towards each other. And try to cover it all. The fish in there yesterday was about a, you know, they was right on the edge of the break from 12 to 15 foot, something like that. So, whatever. If we're pulling any water, that's probably where they'll still be. Guido, like his father and grandfather before him, has guided in Missouri for many years. He's a lure inventor, and when he's not guiding or tournament fishing or designing new lures, he hunts. Dion, too, is a guide, a fourth-generation guide on Lake of the Ozarks. Unlike his father, Dion is not conservative when tournament angling, opting to go for broke. The Hibden fishing team is a family affair. Wife and mother Stella travels with her boys, cooking, arranging lures, running errands, and helping them load and unload their custom-built double-deck trailer. And as the Hibden family loads out following the final qualifying tournament for this year's Bassmasters Classic, Stella Hibden reflects on the past. It has been a long week. We have uh, spent a long year getting to this position. Uh, I think more than a year has gone into it. We started out, uh, Guido started this many years ago, and then as Dion came along, we wanted to get the sun into it, and we got into it. It's taken us three years to get to this week and to get them both to the Classic at the same time. A lot of work, uh, a lot of travel, a lot of road time, and time away from the rest of our family is, you know, it's, it's, it's just been, you know, we're happy, the whole family's happy. The kids at home are ecstatic about it. And, uh, you know, it's all worth it and everything, but it, uh, it takes a lot. And it takes a, I'd say it maybe takes a different kind of a person. Uh, how many fathers can spend 24 hours a day, seven days a week with their kids and uh, still manage to get along and do what we've done? It, you know, it takes a lot of special I don't know what you'd call it, maybe uh, just a lot of hard work, not only fishing-wise, but uh, family-wise, just, I guess, just to survive and get along and, and try to do what we have to do. The Bassmasters will be right back from Richmond, Virginia, as the second day weigh-in starts separating these anglers. Don't go away. 
folks, that is a woo, big bass. The close of competition this second day of Classic 18. And weigh in at the Richmond Coliseum. It's here that the stage for the final countdown will be set. And things start happening fast as Gary Klein comes to the weigh-in platform. Okay, Gary Klein, you got five good fish. You know, you were just a little over. How much were you out? A pound and... Ray, I figured I had about eight pounds in there. What did you, how much were you out before you uh, started today? Sixteen ounces. Sixteen ounces, one pound. Seven pounds. Watch it. Fifteen ounces. Mark it. Folks, he's our new leader, Gary Klein. Defending champion George Cochran makes his move. Oh! That's it, folks. That's what it's about. Woo! Boom. I knew it had to happen. George Cochran, the winner of last year's classes. Hey, this is going to be something. Now, how much was he out of the lead last, last yesterday? George, you may be pulling in the lead again. A repeat, you know, there's only been one man in history to ever repeat winning the Bass Master Classic, that's Rick Clun. Well, there might be two. <laughs> Thank you, George. All right. Let's watch the weight. We don't want to dilly-dally. We want to weigh these fish while they're nice and ready. Biggest weight of the entire tournament, 11 pounds. 14 ounces. Let's get it to him, folks. Boom. And another former world champion comes to the scales. All right, bring him straight on up here, big boy. Folks, we tease Paul Elias. You know, he looks like the man on the, on the Smith Brothers cough drop. Have you ever seen that guy with the big black beard? But he's been fishing with us for years. He won uh, the Bassmasters Classic a few years ago. Five bass for Paul Elias. Paul's weight, he's taking the lead. Nine pounds and... 8 ounces, mark it, 9-8, the new leader. But it's the hometown Puts favorite the crowd is waiting for, Wu Daves. One more. Oh! He may have it. He may have it. He may have it. It's going to be close. Let's everybody stand up one time. Stretch. He's, folks, he's got to have eight pounds and uh, he's got to have eight pounds and one ounce to take the lead away from Paul Elias. Got to have it. Got to have eight one to take the lead, Wu. Eight pounds. Hold it. Let him settle down. Eight pounds, nine ounces. He takes the lead by half a pound. Woo. Day three of the Bassmasters Classic World Championship is coming up from Richmond, Virginia. Stay tuned. day of Classic 18, and one of these 42 fishermen will today be named the 1988 Bassmasters Classic World Champion. But there's lots of fishing between now and then, and lots of water to cover in the 85-mile stretch of the James River and its tributaries. Some anglers, like Guido Hibden, admit they find tidal water hard to fish. Well, yeah, it's, it's a good bit tougher. You know, I'm not... Uh... All I'm used to fishing tidal water, so it's. I have. I've been trying to make myself not fish the tide. You know, I, I am, but I'm just not letting my mind get messed up enough to really run out and try to run the tide because I don't know that much about it anyway. But it's pretty tough body of water. Paul Elias in second place knows what he'll do today. I intend to go out and fish the same way I've been fishing the whole tournament. I, 
I'm, I'm working a pattern more or less that I'm known known for doing. You know, I'm fishing open lake cover, and and, and I just, you know, there's, a, there's some good fish there, and there's a good concentration of fish, and I'm going to stay with them all day. And the leader, Wu Daves, has his plan. Well, I'm having a tough time every day. I caught a few the first day. Yesterday, I just got five fish. I think I had uh, eight bites. So I know I'm going to have to go out and fish hard again today and you know, hopefully get seven or eight bites to be able to put five of them in, and one of them will have to be a good fish in order to have a chance. Unquestionably, Wu Daves knows the river better than any angler in this competition. He has the hometown advantage and the lead, but he must catch bass to stay in the hunt because he's only nine ounces ahead of Paul Elias, a former classic champion who's shown he can fish under pressure. His consistent performance this week proves that. Gary Klein in fourth place this morning is also in the hunt, only a pound nine ounces behind the leader. The area Gary's been fishing has been consistent the past two days. The final weigh-in of Classic 18 here in the Richmond Coliseum. A patriotic Virginia weigh-in. And it starts with a bang as a laser light extravaganza heats up the crowd. Popular entertainer Lee Greenwood performs to a standing ovation. And I won't forget the men who died, who gave that right to me. And I gladly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this man. God bless. Classic 18 comes alive with a full house of avid screaming fans waiting to watch history made as the 1988 Bassmasters Classic Champion is determined. Most of the leaders are in the last group of anglers to weigh in. But that's not to say the leaders are the only ones to watch. Anglers like Ken Cook of Oklahoma have proved they have the right stuff. He's needing to bass at least three pounds. Oh! That's still not it. Hey, he could pull in the lead with this, do he? He sure could. He probably will be. You've got to take two hands to get this one. <laughs> that's it. He says, that's it. Folks, that is a knockout. That could be the biggest thing of the tournament. The biggest fish of the tournament. That could be the biggest stringer of the tournament. That very well could be the biggest stringer of the tournament. Uh, that's, a, that's a wonderful looking catch. Of course, he, he led us on really good there, and he saved the big one to the last. Let's see what they weigh. All right, well, wonderful. Fantastic, fantastic catch. Lee Greenwood. Hey, dude. Watch the scales, folks. Watch the scales. He could pull in the lead with this. It's possible. Biggest catch of the tournament, 14 pounds, three ounces. I told you I'd get a roar. Hold up the two big ones. Folks, he's got big fish, big bass. Man, that was a knockout. Let's weigh the big bass. Now, we got $1,500 riding on the big fish, and the biggest fish today so far, four pounds, seven ounces. That was caught by Denny Brower just a few moments ago. I bet you dog this one's bigger than that. No way, Jose. Fish is going to go almost five pounds. I bet it's bigger than that, too. 
Six pounds, zero ounces. Biggest face of the day. Classic 18 takes on a whole new dimension. There is much emotion here. Winning the world championship is the dream of every competitive bass angler. Regardless of how hard an angler has worked to get here, or how well or poorly he's done in this competition, he still knows there's only one world champion. But it's never over till it's over. As Guido Hibden points out as he waits in the wings to weigh in. I lost bigger fish than I thought. I caught six, and every fish I lost was bigger than that. But I done all I could do, you know, it's just one of those tough breaks. And, uh, you know, I feel real good about it. You know, I fish good, so that makes me feel good. I done all I could do. But we'll make it interesting. It's going to be a shootout. Here comes the daddy half of the Hibden family, Guido Hibden, who was in fifth place when we started out this morning and definitely in reach of the classic victory. Rebel Hills, Rebel Mills, Missouri. Professional guide. He's 42 years old. His wife, Stella, is a great supporter of his. And this is the second time in the history of our tournament circuit that we've had a father and son team fishing the tournament. Bill and Greg Ward several years ago made it from Missouri. And here we go with Guido and Dion Hipton. Guido is fishing his third Bassmasters Classic, and he's been in the top ten on ten occasions, five of which were this season. He won the 1980 and the 1981 Missouri Invitational Tournament, which put a lot of money in his pocket. And today, his winnings are more than $110,000, just from tournament practice. He has a chance to take the lead. He has 17 pounds and 8 ounces. He knows what he's got to do. The word's already been spreading back down the ranks. Okay, we just got word that, uh, the, that who, yeah, who days, he didn't make it in. Okay, who days made it in on time. He's on his way in. He's about 20, 20 minutes out. Okay. All right, there's one fish, Guido Hibden. He's got a chance with a limit to pull into the lead. No question about it, it's a good fish. Two pounds and two ounces. And he's still digging. Folks, he's never won a classic. He's fixing to win one if he pulls out another fish any bigger than that one. He'll have the lead. It's gonna be close. It's gonna be mighty close. Ken Cook, I was looking at him over here, he's standing on his tiptoes shaking his head. He knows that Guido Hibden had knocked the bottom out of the James River. I got a feeling, I said this the first day, that I had a feeling you'd win this tournament, Guido. I hope you're right. Well, you've got a limit, and you did not bring in little bitty one-pound bass. These are all good, solid keepers. Watch the scales, folks. We may have a new leader. 11 pounds, zero ounces. Let's give him a good hand. Bingo. Pick up two bass and show these folks. Folks, the magic here is he has five bass, but they're all big fish. These are much bigger than average. And he knew he had to do that. He either had to catch big bass. He has pulled into the lead with 29 pounds and one ounce. A new leader, Guido Hibden, pulling ahead of Ken Cook. Guido, you're here and you're in the lead, and of course we have a few more men to come in, and we don't have any idea what they've got. We've heard rumors, but of course rumors are cheap in Richmond. You are, it appears to be a pound and about 14 ounces more or less ahead of uh, Ken Cook, followed of course by Jack Haynes, and those guys are already in, Mark uh, Davis and uh, Jimmy Houston, but you're the man at the moment. I worked awful hard today. I don't even know if I can talk. <laughs> Uh, this ought to be good. <laughs> I lost five big fish today. I lost five fish that was bigger than any that I weighed in. It was kind of a kind of a silly thing the way I started off this morning. I put on a spinnerbait this morning. I haven't been a doing any good on a spinnerbait. I've been a flipping a jig, and that way I was pretty sure whenever a fish bit, I felt like I could get him in if I get him on the jig. I throw the spinnerbait. The second cast I made this morning, a six-pounder gets on it, and I crank him to a tree, and the keeper hook breaks off. 
you know, now how many times are you going to break a big stainless steel keeper hook? It broke off. So that wasn't too bad. You know, I caught two more fish after that. I felt pretty good. And then I, four pounder breaks my line. Hey, I just had a great time. You know, I, I lost five good fish and I'm tickled to death to be here. You know, it, this, this is tough on a 42 year old man. It really is. I, I've had a great time. Well, you know it's uh, not over. You've got some other people, but for the moment, you've got the lead with 28 pounds and 8 ounces. Well, we're all winners. You know, there's, there's 42 guys here, then there isn't a loser in the bunch. Uh, boy. Let's hear it, folks. Guido Hibden. A new leader emerges, Guido Hibden. But yet another angler makes his 11th hour move. Former classic champion Tommy Martin. He's going for broke. He's 14 pounds and 8 ounces. I don't think he'll make it. Oh, uh oh, look out. He, oh, he's going after another fish. Look at that. That's great. Fantastic. Nobody but Tommy Martin pulls rabbits out of hats. He was in 12th place when he started this morning. This is going to move him way up, Governor. Eleven pounds, six ounces. Eleven pounds, six ounces. That's going to move him way up in the standings. We'll know in just a minute, Tommy. You have just moved into third place, Tommy. You'll notice from the scoreboard over here. We want to wish you well. Thank you, Ray. Any comments at all about your experience here in Richmond? Well, yes, I've had a, of course, had a good time. Just making the classic is. Uh, one of my goals each year, and uh, it's getting tougher and tougher each year to make it. And I'm also really honored to, to be able to do this well in the Classic. You know, last year I didn't have a good tournament, and Richmond was real good to me. I came up and pre-practiced on the river, and I didn't catch many fish. I, I didn't know if there were any fish out there or not, but when I came back and it really counted, things paid off for me. But it's been a great tournament for me, and I've enjoyed being here. All right, folks, nice hand for Tommy Martin. Thank you, Tommy. And now it's shootout time with the angler who started in second place. Rumors are rampant around the arena that Paul Elias has bass in the back. Is that four? All right, there's his limit, folks. And that won't make it. What can we say? Let's give a nice hand, folks. Paul Elias, he gave it his best. Meet the governor, Paul Elias. Paul is from, uh, from Laurel, Mississippi, Governor. We're delighted to have you here. I'm delighted to be here. You had a good time. I did. I had a real good time. I had a pretty rough day today, but uh, I, uh, let me see what these things weigh. And, uh, Let the governor call it. Seven pounds even. All right, that's it. Paul Elias. But here he is. There's only one angler left who can change this outcome. And the crowd comes alive as hometown favorite Wu Daves enters the way in error. The next few minutes will write the last chapter for Classic 18. <laughs> Wu doesn't care. And Mama, she's still sitting down over here. Bassmaster Magazine. 
We want to watch the fish closely, folks. He's got to have, how much has he got to have, Governor? 813. 813. Lift him up high, Wu, and nice and slow. We want to see him slow. The first fish weighed a pound and four ounces. Two. He's got to have more. That's three already. He's got to have some big fish. He won't make it. He's got to have a big fish. He'll never make it without a three-pounder. Three You, of course, know. Wu, you've got to have eight pounds and 13 ounces to take the lead away from Guido Hibden. Before the scales hit, let's give Wu one big hand, folks, whatever the weight. He's got his limit. He's got his limit, Governor. We let the Governor call it. I'm not going to call it. But you got to have 813 to beat Guido Hibner, otherwise he's our champion. Eight pounds, six ounces. He missed it. <laughs> Guido Hibner is our champion of the Bass Masters Classic. Forty-two years old. The Lord's blessed him, he said, more than any man in the world. He's fished his whole life away, spending about 200 days a year. Sella loves these two men. She said this morning they're alive. Let's give Stella a nice hand. She comes up here. This is a governor, Stella. <laughs> you got, got the boy up here, too. Dion is here, the whole crowd. Listen, this is a, just an incredible moment. You'd be 41 of the best fishermen in the world, and that's those small feet. And God bless you, boy. We're proud of you. I love them all. You know, they're a great bunch of guys. They're just asked to be a winner, you know, and, it, and I know how Wu feels. Ken and all of them, you know, I've been there a lot of times. It, it, hey, the old Sal finally got an acre, and I guess, I don't know. It, I feel so great that I, I can't, it seems like whenever I start to talk, I can't get it out. I've had a great time, you know, this is like a, it's a dream come true. It, after all these years of working so hard, it finally happened. You know, they, they're all just a great bunch of guys. You know, I, I want to thank you too, Ray, and all the staff, all the sponsors. I could start naming them. I'd never get it out. I appreciate it very much. That's it, folks. Let's have it one more time for our champion, Guido Hibden. Hold that trophy.